The Arlesdale Railway is known for its very small but useful engines. It is a huge tourist attraction and many flock to see the beautiful Arlesdale countryside. The engines were all very busy. Good God! I hate all this work! Quarry work as well as passengers? What is this, a production line or something? Oh, stop being an ass, Frank! You only work about five hours a day! He, on the other hand, work about ten. Stop arguing, all of you. It's a lovely day. Right down, train, coming through. Oh, for goodness sake, you don't have to talk at the same time. We wouldn't be identical if we didn't. Come on, Mike. Time to get your train ready. Well, it's about time. Mike liked puffing through the countryside on his own. It made him so jolly inside. Ah, this air is absolutely wonderful. The coaches all agreed. However, Mike's mood changed whenever he had to wait for other engines to pass by. Where the devil is he? Why can't Frank wait for me to pass by instead of making me wait for him? Relax, Mike. We've only been waiting for about two minutes. And look, there's Frank. Good tidings, Mike. I see your paint matches your mood. <laughs> buzz off, buzz box. Mike's favorite part of the line was the forest. He loved it here. It was quiet and peaceful. He wished he could live in the trees rather than on the railway. Mike stopped so the passengers could take photographs. Why can't the other engines appreciate the forest like me? Because everyone has different minds, Mike. We all have different interests. Before Mike could respond, a car suddenly rushed by at a tremendous speed. SHIT! What kind of a wanker is driving that? Probably a drunk, idiot. Right. Come on. Let's keep moving. When Mike reached Arlesdale, the car had crashed and the driver was being questioned by the police. Jock was idling on the turntable. What happened? Drunk driver came in about 80 miles per hour. What stupid things your vehicles are. They do have more freedom, though. They don't have to stick to the rails. They can simply roam wherever they like. I'd rather keep my rails. You always go where you're meant to go. I don't have as many accidents. But Mike was wondering what life on the road was like, and he talked about it with the other engines that night. Only a daft engine would actually try to travel by road. I'm not saying I'd actually try. <laughs> I just thought being a car would be so much more efficient. You can go anywhere you like. Well, it's not worth trying, haha. <laughs> Next morning, Mike was steaming up for his train when Duck came by with some ballast trucks. Morning, Mike. You look cheerful today. I am. Hey, Duck. Have you ever wanted to just fly off the rails and move gracefully down the road without a care? Um, I'm going to have to say no, Mike. Have you? I've been thinking that road travel is much more efficient than traveling by rail. Ballast is ready! I've always wondered what it's like. Birdie and Terence gave me an idea, but I want to experience it for myself. I wish I could ride on the road for once. Ride on the road? Are you daft? <laughs> Mike, you make me chuckle. <laughs> Shut up, Frank. Anyway, it's time to get my train ready. Well, Mike, um, don't do anything stupid. Mike was very busy that day and soon forgot all about his desire for road travel. He worked hard all day running to and from Arlesdale. Soon, he was on his last run back to Arlesboro. Mike was always anxious to get home as soon as possible as he didn't like traveling in the dark. He had bad experiences at night, including crashing into Frank while trying to find a farmer's lamb without a headlight. 
Come on, come on, we gotta get home before dark. Calm down, Mike. We'll get there soon and you can have a good night's sleep. Not too far down the line, Jock was taking an old truck filled with cement. It was starting to leak. Oh no! I must deliver this as soon as possible! And Jock hurried along the line, making the car shudder and shake. Then, a huge dollop of wet cement poured onto the tracks. Jock didn't realize and kept on going. The wet cement eventually dried. Mike was heading straight towards it. He wasn't paying attention to the line and was looking up at the sky. When he and his driver realized what was in front of him, it was too late. Ooh, good lord! What happened? Some idiot left some shit on the tracks! I think it's cement! How the hell it got on the tracks, I have no idea! Great! Well, don't just stand there! Fetch some assistance! So the driver did. He ran to the nearest telephone box and called for the breakdown train. He came back soon. We've, um, got a bit of a problem. There's more concrete on the tracks ahead, so the blisters can't come with the breakdown train until it's removed which won't be until tomorrow. Blast it! I've got a train full of passengers! A bus will take them home. Well, how am I supposed to get home, then? Unless we find another way, you're gonna have to stay put for the night. Oh dear, the road will have a rage tomorrow. <laughs> Wait a minute! The road! We're only about 900 meters from Arlesboro. We could just have you puff along the road there. Are you serious? A train go on the road? This is outrageous stupidity! You want to stay here all night, then? And cause road traffic tomorrow? No, I'll do it. But just this once. The passengers helped push Mike onto the road. Mike was terrified. His wheels were wobbling violently. Uh, uh, oh my Buddha, oh my Buddha, I don't like this at all. Alright, Mike. Ready? Go! And he pulled the regulator. Mike slowly made his way towards Arlesboro. His wheels weren't used to not being on the rails, and it felt like they would break to pieces any moment. When he had to turn, the workman who had been following behind would lift him and put him in the right direction. Yikes! Damn it to hell in a handbasket! This is outrageously frightening! At last, he reached Arlesboro. Donald was there with the breakdown train as a small railway wasn't accessible by road there. You're a brave wee engine! Thank you, Donald. Now please get me back on the rails. Soon, Mike was back on the track. He had never felt so relieved in his life. We'll assist you back to the shed. Stay where you are. No, I'll go myself, thank you and Mike slunk back to the shed. I am terribly sorry, Mike. I should have gone slowly with the cement. Oh no, it wasn't your fault, Jock. Maybe you'll enjoy it next time. Mike ignored him. Lovely things, Rhodes. Shut up, Bert. And Mike said no more that night. Let's just say his desire for road travel at the end.